Hello, it's me, <clears throat> and once again I'm pulling out the 3x4x5, which I always take every excuse to do, due to a question, a dilemma, a situation that a viewer brought to my attention, which I find to be very interesting. I'm actually glad that he pointed this out. But basically what it appears to be is two things that are off, and I put this in as close a confirmation as I could. Now bear in mind, my puzzle's from Shapeways, it's not the mass produced, so the color scheme is different. I think in his it was blue and uh, white on both sides. But in any case, you see you have one side where to the right it's fine, but to the left it's orange. It's the opposite color. And when I turn it around, same thing. On the right, it's the same side on the second layer, or the correct color, but you've got the red side over here. So. This is unique, this is interesting, I've not gone over this. So we'll talk about how to get through this, how to navigate our way through this one. Um, again, this is not a confirmation using my method that I come across, that, um, that I end up with, but uh, so be it, there it is. So basically, this is something that somehow got reduced when you got to the uh, non-shape-shifting form, you know, when you got to the cuboid form. Somehow when you put it in, it was a little different than perhaps the way that I usually do it, so you ended up with this confirmation. But it doesn't matter how you got into it, how the heck do you get out of it? So here's, here's what you do. Basically, we need to take this out of the, sh uh, out of the uh, cuboid form for a second, because in a way, it's kind of like a parody in that you collapsed it into, reduced it into a cuboid shape to do 180 degree solves, but you put it in a way that could not be scrambled in, in, in that particular way. So it's a placement issue, but I guess in some ways it's kind of like a parody. Basically, what you want to do is using one of your sides, I'm going to use the red one with the bad side up over here, the key first is to get these two so that they're um, kind of opposite each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a 2B. So I'm going to move this over here. The purpose of doing that is to put this down here and this up here. Once you do that, then go the same thing over here. Do 2F, and then you're going to do a U, but it's just going to be a middle U. So 2F, just a middle U here, so that's U. Then you're going to do a 2R, where now this becomes your 2R because these are the same. So after that, you do 2R, then do a UI, just the middle, the middle U, UI, then do 2L, and then you kind of repeat that same thing again. So then you go U, 2R, UI, 2L, and that kind of resets things in a way. Then you take again with, you go again with a 2F, and then just this middle R over here, so it's like a small R. So 2R, and then 2F, and then swing it back the other way with this commutator, doing a 2L, U, just that second U, 2R, UI, then do it again, 2L, U, 2R, UI, and then finish it off with a, another 2R, but just this middle one here, 2R. Then you have this interesting cross pattern, and uh, to get it back from here, it's fairly intuitive. I'm basically going to move these, this guy back here with another 2F so that this coincides with this, move this here with a 2R. And then we're going to move this 2B again back again. See, this guy over here. So 2B. Then what you have is a very easily solvable, um, quote, parity algorithm here. So I'm going to start off with this one, move these to here. This is even numbered algorithm. So that's going to be 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, and 2F, 2R, 2U. Now we just have this and this bring this up so that it's just opposite here, even number algorithm, 2u, 2r, 2f, my f is sliced here, 2u, 2f, 2r, 2u, 2f, that brings it up to here, so we do it again, 2u, 2r, 2f, 2u, 2f, 2r, 2u, 2f. Swing this on back, and we just have one more even number to go, 2u, 2r, 2f, 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, and you did it. So, not sure how you walked into that, but that's how you walk out of it. 
Hope that helps. Keep it coming. Thanks for watching. So here's an, another viewer question. Someone ha brought up the um, details of how to solve uh, the Fisher cube. So this is a Fisher cube. Now I had not done this in the past because I did the uh, the blade. Well, actually, I did the um, I did the case cube, and case cube is very similar to this in structure. Um, but in any case, the question had to do with issues regarding uh, what appeared to be placement um, of the last layer. Now I'm not sure exactly what the issue was, so I figured what I'm going to do is just go through the solve, go through the uh, uh, very quick solve, and if what I do answers the question or manages to avoid it the way that I solve it, great! In any case, you can see with, with the Fisher cube, this is a pretty interesting mod. You've got the top and the bottom that moves the way a classic cube does, but then you've got these areas that move by an axis. So they're all sides, this is a side over here, this is a middle here, middle here. So middle, edge, edge. These edge edges basically look like what I guess would be, uh, well, what would be the corners over here. So these are edges on the top, these are middles on the bottom, these are edges on this layer here, and the ones that look like edges from here are actually corners on, on the side. So it makes for an interesting kind of a challenge. Uh, so what I'm going to do is scramble this real quick and go through the uh, solve. And my hope is that this will address any issues or problems that you might be having with this particular puzzle. Uh, so, abracadabra. Okay, so let's see if we can quickly make short work of this. I'm going to start off with the layers where the center is, um, is easy to visualize. I guess these aren't so hard to visualize here. These are centers over here. So this is already up here and this is uh, orange and blue. So this is going to match with this. So I just have to orient this up here. So you can see that this is upside down and that's pretty easy to see. So turn it here, bang, zoom. Now actually what you should do first, I kind of skipped a step. Let's orient our centers to begin with. So this is going to be sort of the orange area here. This is already oriented here. This is going to come over here. So just orient the center so that these colors match. Um, I guess it didn't scramble so great, but basically if they were all skewed up and skewed around like this, then you'd know to basically coordinate these so that these colors match over here. Blue, blue, red, red, green, green. Then once you do that, we start doing our cross, and these crosses are going to be based on these wedge-shaped things over here. This is already matched up. This obviously doesn't belong here, so we're going to move this down. And the thing about super cubes is always make sure you reorient your centers back or, or you're going to get confused. So this belongs next to this one over here. So like with all super cubes, turn it down to accept it here so that it matches, and then turn it up. I'm going through this part kind of fast because I don't think that this was where the big question was, so I don't want to belabor any points here. So this comes to here. So what I'm going to do is turn this to the side, move it up. You can see that's incorrect over here. So it's going to move in from this side. Move it to the side. Move it up. You can see that's correct. And move it in, and then you got to be sure to move this up. So kind of intuitively get the cross. If I'm going too fast and you want me to do another one slow down, let me know. This is more just to address kind of a specific question. I don't think this was the problem area. Now I do corners. Corners where normally you'd think the edges would be. But these are the edges to be skewed with this side here. So this is obviously a corner that comes over here and it's green. So these corners just have one color and not three. And it fits into here. So we just roll it in bearing in mind that this is a side here. And up. Now I'm not doing what I usually do, which is show a normal super cube and cube along with that, but like I say, this is just to kind of get us to where the question was. So you can see this is fine over here. Uh, now where was that red one that I knocked down? Right here. So this goes to where the red side is here. Once again, don't think that this is a edge and these are corners, although you'd think so because these are three colors like a corner. These are edges and these are corners here. So go bang, zoom, and pow. Alright, so pretty clear I hope so far. This is the blue and, and yellow, so this is going to be slid into here. I think the biggest problem that the viewer may have had is perspective with this, because once you get the perspective it falls together pretty simply. Um, this 
orange comes up to here. Remember, turn it from this area here, which is the actual side, turn. So we have our first layer. Ignore these. This is not the cross here. This is the cross, as I think you've already probably figured out, but our first layer is here. So now we do the middle layer, which are all edges, and we're going to be putting, we're going to be putting um, these guys in. And these are all edges over here. This edge goes to the top because it's white, and these edges on the, on the uh, middle layer here are all one color. So here's a red, and I can tell this red is a red edge that goes down here somewhere because it doesn't have a white color. So we'll move it just to the side of where it's got to go. Then we do the algorithm that moves it from here to here and from the left side in this particular case. So we have UI L I U L U F U I F I. So there that is over here. Again, whoops, Rubik's Cube stuff. So now this comes down to here. And we'll make short work work out of that. And finally, this is, well not finally, this is going to come down to here. And again, it's my suspicion that this wasn't where the question was, but if it was, then I hope I'm making it clear. Okay, last one, the green. The green one comes into here. Turn, 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 turn. Okay, so we have the middle layer here too. Now the last layer. This is where I think the question came in because we know that these are edges and these are corners here. And now we have to flip them all uh, and all right side up, basically. So it's pretty easy to see what's flipped right side up and what's flipped upside down. This is upside down because it has to come to here. And these are right side up. And you may say, uh-oh, we got a problem. We have what appears to be a parity problem because only one is flipped upside down and the other three are flipped right side up. And we know that according to the law of cubes, you're not supposed to get that because that's like just swapping one and you can't swap an odd number of uh, pieces. So why did this happen? Well, take on faith again that this could not have happened like this because you don't get parity problems with even layer puzzles and that's all this really is. Which means we falsely equivocated something. By that I mean we put something in a position where we couldn't tell if it's right side up or upside down or we took two pieces and put it put one for the other when in reality it should have been the other way around. So when you see this, think false equivocation. It's not parity. We have to reorient something. Well, these are edges, so the problem must be an edge somewhere else. Now the unique thing about these edges here, unlike the edges of a normal Rubik's Cube, is that I could flip this around and you wouldn't know the difference. You wouldn't, this is equivalent or appears to be equivalent whether it's facing this way or flipped. But that's where the problem is because this puzzle actually wants it to be one way or another. So in order to flip this, we actually need to swap two. So we'll swap this, which will in turn end up swapping that. So what you do is you pick any one, it doesn't matter, and we have to bring this out and flip this back down. Put this back down but flipped 180 degrees. You wouldn't know that it's flipped 180 degrees by looking at it, so that's what we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's move this blue one up arbitrarily. So turn, 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 okay? Still holding it here, you can see the blue one is now here. Swing this around this way, and I'll put it in again. It'll be 180 degrees from where it was. So turn, 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 turn. You would never notice a difference, but what you do notice is two are up and two are down, which is exactly what you want. So you have a line over here, and you basically fixed it. So F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. And now everything is fine. To get the uh, cross, you look for the one that's in and the rest that's not in. So hold it here and then permute these around. So you're in effectively doing a, you're swapping two, which cycles three. And that's R, U. Remember, this is R and this is F. Don't want to make any assumptions here or too many anyway. R, U, R, I, U, R, two, U, R, I. And without too much muss or fuss, these will all be in. Then we just permute these uh, corners. There's always going to be either one in or none in, but not two. That's this one. So holding it here, do the algorithm that, that permutes these corners. U, R, U, I, 
L I U R I U I L. Eventually, whoops, well, that's the first time that happened. Anyway, so do it again. Bang, bang, zoom, zoom, pow, pow, splat, kerplop. So now all these are in. These just need to be rotated in the usual way, doing the R I D I moves. Turn, 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 turn. Kick this over here and through the power of algorithms and keeping with the strategy that was exactly the same save for one instance of false equivocation you will successfully hopefully solve your Fisher cube so uh, that's the method that I use I hope that somewhere along the line that addressed the question that you had and the configuration that you had if not let me know or obviously if, if there's any questions which is really helpful to me is if a video is posted like uh, um, what happened with the 3 by 4 by 5 or a picture is given it's a lot easier for me to visualize that way I can put the puzzle in the confirmation that you have and solve it from there anyway keep the questions coming thanks for watching